Inclusive Leadership. The first article I read was by Stephen Covey and called A School for Leadership. He wrote, at leadership-themed schools, educators are preparing students to achieve success. Covey is the author of The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. The seven habits, which are culturally universal, are be proactive, begin with the end in mind, put first things first, think win-win, seek first to understand, then to be understood, synergize, and sharpen the saw. Think win-win goes along with inclusive leadership by treating everyone with respect and being considerate of others. Seek first to understand, then to be understood relates to inclusiveness by seeing things from others' viewpoints. Synergize also fits with inclusive leadership by working well with others who are different. In this article, Covey wrote about a magnet school in North Carolina that was about to be demagnetized because of a lack of interest. It had a diverse population, but was not gaining the attention of many students. The principal, Muriel Summers, had been attending a workshop of Covey's and was inspired by his leadership ideas. After questioning parents and the community members, it was decided that leadership would be the focus and would be built around the seven habits. Their mission statement became to develop leaders one child at a time. This school created a number of leadership practices. First, to put the culture first, students develop classroom mission statements. They write goals and track their progress, create an interview for class leadership roles, such as library leader or greeter, and they learn manners and etiquette. To reinforce the culture, students are shown love and respect and are greeted each day. Students take on leadership roles, they lead school activities and even help interview new teachers. There is a video news program each morning that students create to share accomplishments and a lesson on one of the habits. Teachers participate in a hallway huddle. Each morning they gather to share a quote and to encourage one another. To make leadership visible, there is artwork in the hallway reflecting leadership. There are also flags for each of the 26 nationalities of students present in the school. After the creation of this leadership magnet school, test scores, enrollment, and student self-confidence increased. Other schools then began implementing leadership. At this school, there is a focus on three holes. The first is the whole child. Academic skills, social development, physical health, and character are taught to students. They are also taught independence and interdependence. Independence is the ability of students to live responsibly. Interdependence is the ability of them to work well in teams consisting of anyone. When focusing on the whole school, character and skills are integrated into the school culture. The leadership philosophy is known and felt, and everyone is considered a leader. The final hole is a whole lot of imagination. Covey's seven habits are integrated into lessons and activities. A focus is on building the image of one another and oneself. The second article I read is called The Vision Thing. Without it, you'll never be a world-class organization by Ken Blanchard and Jesse Stoner. They wrote, when people share and believe in a vision of what the organization can be, they generate tremendous energy, excitement, and passion. Some main points include the following. There should be a sense of responsibility, trust, and respect among all members. The authors even said that Martin Luther King Jr.'s vision of everyone respecting each other is continuing to motivate people today. There are three factors, according to the authors, that should drive organizations. A clear vision, training everyone to implement the vision, and giving members recognition. To have a clear vision, everyone should have a say in its creation. Having a significant purpose is knowing why the organization exists. By being able to picture the future, one is able to know what the future should look like if the purpose is fulfilled. Clear values that are part of the vision include ways people should behave. Leaders should continue communicating the vision and live the vision. When training everyone to implement the vision, all members are considered responsible owners of the vision. Even those members serving customers should be allowed to make decisions and think for themselves. People should be appreciated for their good efforts while being redirected or coached on behaviors that need to be improved. Recognition should be used to encourage the vision. 
the authors noted that everyone wants to be recognized. In the two articles that I read, the authors showed examples of inclusive leadership and demonstrated the levels of leadership as presented in the Leadership Challenge by Kuzis and Posner. A quote that emphasizes inclusive leadership is, Without trust, you cannot lead. Model away. In Covey's Seven Habits book, he set an example for others and clarified what makes people effective. He modeled the way and inspired other schools to be formed around these leadership ideas. Members at this school clarify their values by writing classroom mission statements. From this school's example, other schools have become centered on leadership themes. In Blanchard and Stoner's article, their main emphasis is to have a clear vision that is created by and agreed upon by all members. Without that piece, they say organizations won't be world class. Inspire a shared vision. In Covey's article, he wrote that a magnet school was going to be demagnetized because of a lack of interest. The principal had a vision for the future that would include the continuation of the magnet school. After surveying the community members, they all agreed that the future of their school should include leadership. By allowing everyone to participate in creating the vision, according to Blanchard and Stoner, people will become excited about it. Part of inspiring a shared vision is envisioning the future. Blanchard and Stoner insist that having a picture of the future is necessary for having a compelling vision. Challenge the process. The principle that Covey wrote about created a school with leadership as its focus, which had not been done in that community before. She challenged the process by taking a risk, and it is paid off. Covey's first habit, Be Proactive, would include searching for opportunities to grow, which is part of challenging the process. Blanchard and Stoner indicate that change is likely to happen. They say to seize the challenge and to start a new path. Enable others to act. At the Leadership Magnet School, teachers are developing students' competence by teaching them leadership and allowing them to practice those roles. One of the skills important to the school is trust. There are many teamwork opportunities at the school. Covey's first habit, seek first to understand, then to be understood, is an example of enabling others to act because relationships can be built and strengthened when communication and trust are involved. Blanchard and Stoner insist that good organizations are ones that allow all members the ability to make decisions and think for themselves. Leaders trust their followers and are enabling them to act. And finally, encourage the heart. The school Covey wrote about encourages the heart in many of their day-to-day -day activities, such as the hallway huddle and the video news program. With the amount of diversity at the school, students are able to practice inclusive leadership by becoming a community and teaming up with students of different race, class, and gender. By giving students an opportunity to create their class mission statements, they are all being treated as leaders. Covey's sixth habit, Synergize, includes working well with others, which would create a spirit of community. According to Blanchard and Stoner, people can become encouraged by knowing the vision they helped create is compelling. Their happiness will be evident as they know their work is worthwhile. Their practices include inclusive leadership by treating everyone equally and allowing them a say in creating the vision. All members should have an equal access in the development and practice of the vision. Blanchard and Stoner emphasize the importance of recognizing successes, which is an example of encouraging the heart. In the future, I would like to become a reading specialist. According to Rita Bean, leadership is defined as any activities or set of activities associated with working with others to reach or accomplish a common goal. In my case, that would be teaching students to read. This is like having a shared vision in which all school personnel are working through the process of helping students improve their literacy. While keeping student learning at the center of focus, I will have a number of leadership roles. As a reading specialist, one of my leadership roles will include providing resources to teachers. Though I may have taken specific classes for a reading specialist degree, that does not mean I am above other teachers. They will be on the same level as me. We all have the end goal of helping students become lifelong readers. This is similar to Blanchard and Stoner's suggestion to have clear vision and direction. To help reach that vision, we must look to the future, and that picture should consist of all students, no matter their race, class, or gender, being able to read. 
By having the end goal in mind, it will be easier to find strategies to reach that goal. Michael Fullen suggests that working together in groups can help schools move forward in a positive way. By collaborating, we will be more trusting of each other, and I can develop competence in the teachers that I work with, which are factors in enabling others to act. Planning workshops is another leadership role I might have as a reading specialist. Fullen and Bean both state the importance of positive change. I will need to stay current in the field of literacy to provide teachers with new ideas that have been proven to work. Part of the workshop may include asking teachers to present on strategies that they've discovered or are great at teaching. This would allow me to celebrate those teachers' accomplishments by encouraging the heart. It will also show other teachers that they, too, can provide helpful insights to each other. Another role will be to teach students. Sometimes I may work with groups of students in the classroom, or other times I may pull students out. This will all be dependent on what is best for the students and teachers. Again, collaboration will play a role, as well as experimentation and risk-taking, to determine effective ways of teaching. Just as in the magnet school that was inspired by Covey's seven habits, I can implement leadership skills into the lessons I teach students. Students can even be encouraged to write their own goals. They can participate in outlining a vision for the school, which is Blanchard and Stoner's suggestion for all members to agree upon a vision. Another role will be to possibly lead a committee for selecting curriculum. When choosing a new curriculum, I will research which ones would be most beneficial for all students. The curriculum would need to support the different learning needs of the students in my school. All students should be allowed the same access to the curriculum, but it should be adapted to fit their needs. Involving families will be another leadership role. I will need to keep in contact with families of the students I work with to help them understand what resources we are providing for their child and what our goals are. I could also send a newsletter home with all students once a month with ideas for reading at home. I would be modeling the way for parents. Fullen believes in the importance in making home and school connections to improve the success of students. A final leadership role would include analyzing data. I may have to select assessments to use and teach others how to conduct them. Once the assessments are given, I will be required to analyze the data and to present it to teachers and other school personnel. Instructional decisions will need to be made based on the results. Teachers will have to collaborate with each other while building a climate of trust to determine how to meet their goals. Teaching in an inclusive manner might mean working with students in the classroom instead of pulling them out because then they wouldn't be labeled. This may become a challenge, though, depending on scheduling. Also, teaching in an inclusive manner may mean working with students, with all students at different times instead of only those who need extra assistance. Scheduling may prove to be an issue if I have other requirements that take precedence and am only allotted time to work with students who need more assistance. I recognize that not all teachers might be familiar with my role and may not want assistance from me. I will begin working with teachers who are open to new suggestions right away, and hopefully through our example, more will be open to the idea of a reading specialist. Fullen believes that it takes a combination of teachers through a child's school career to be able to impact that child. Teamwork among teachers is an integral component of helping students succeed. Some teachers may not like the idea of working on a team and may contradict everything that is said in meetings. As a leader, I will need to make those types of teachers feel welcome and have them understand their ideas are valued. I will share that the decisions that are made will be in students' best interests. To conclude, this quote from Rita Bean highlights the importance of inclusive leadership because leadership is shared and distributed among personnel in different ways. Inclusive leadership is all about sharing responsibilities to meet the needs of our students.